back for the uh, second part of the uh, spar carry through uh, redo. Uh, this is uh, the second version. Uh, if you've watched the uh, first part of this uh, video, you'll see how I uh, made the T section, the basic T section, this, this part, and the web that runs this way. And uh, if you watch the uh, separate video on alignment of the fittings, you'll see how I got these guys in place on the ends of the, uh, the carry through. And in the video that I'm about to show you and fast forward is the application of the load straps around these fittings going around this way to keep them securely attached. Now, uh, I have two finished uh, spar carry throughs. Uh, they came out okay. They're a little messy looking. Um, I probably should have masked off every single area where I didn't want epoxy uh, because it was just a messy process of handling the load strips and epoxy got places I didn't particularly care for it and I had to do quite a bit of cleanup work on it uh, but that's lesson learned for next time uh, I get a chance to bond down the outer fittings and uh, we'll be a little bit neater and cleaner about that uh, I learned a lot in the process of making these I'm not going to make you watch the videos of the ones that uh, I struggled through and didn't go quite as well you're going to see the video of what I think is probably the final method of applying these strips. Uh, the key to it was the application of uh, zip ties to hold the strip tight to the fitting as I wrapped it around. Uh, now the interesting thing about uh, pultruded strips and just about any other stick you care to choose that is uh, of uniform density and springiness, uh, when you bend them, uh, they don't bend on a circular arc. Uh, nor do they stay in a straight line. They're always going to be on some interesting parabolic shape. That's just the nature of material when you bend it. I don't know, maybe it's a hyperbolic cosine thing, maybe it's some other parabolic, I don't know which mathematical equation defines it, but it's not a circle. However, uh, the, these fittings are a circle here. So uh, in order to, uh, the tendency of the material is to actually uh, stick out beyond. You know, if you got it clamped on the side and it's just going to want to stick out a little bit over here or maybe off the end and the zip ties help hold it tight in place. You'll see me apply those in the video. Now, so I got a finished part, uh, extremely strong. Uh, this is really stout. It's going to sit in the center section of the wing. This is the bottom one. This goes on the bottom like this. Uh, this is the top one here. I have the top one with uh, pins in and the outer half inch thick fitting. Uh, that attaches to the uh, main wing, wing section spar. So there's two of these like this. There's a shear web in between, and uh, I have yet to cut these uh, fittings to fit the outer uh, uh, wing panel spar. Uh, both of these are good and usable. Uh, I did have some rework to do on them. Uh, in the variety of clamping methods I used, none of them were absolutely perfect, uh, and uh, I had areas where there was insufficient bonding between the load strap and the fitting itself. And I had to go back in with my X-Acto knife and clean out all the epoxy and spend some time, like hours, uh, opening those back up. And then I forced uh, structural adhesive back into that opening and reclamped them. And they're all glued down solid now. So I have good usable parts. Probably one of the fascinating things is uh, he, here's the uh, design that I started building. This is the one that has the Divinicel uh, foam core, uh, wood around the outside, plywood uh, core here on the ends with doublers on it. And then I was going to bore these out and put in bushings here. And uh, that's the point at which I stopped because I was contemplating how I was actually going to securely bond those bushings in uh, a piece of material that's only 5 sixteenths of an inch thick. Uh, a little bit of a trick to that. Uh, and uh, comments came in, and I made some design decisions and went to these guys. Um, this was probably, uh, if I had to do this again, this would be faster to build. Uh, there's about probably 30 fewer parts between this one and this one. Uh, anytime you reduce the number of parts th by that many, it just goes faster. Uh, and it's just a little simpler to build and requires a little less uh, accuracy uh, or uh, fiddle, fiddling work in order to build it, uh, probably because of the reduced number of parts. But it is harder in one way, and, and that was getting this load strap put on here. Now, the difference in weight between these, uh, one pound, uh, 1.19 1 
pounds. 1.32 pounds. So, what, a little over a tenth of a pound difference, about two ounces difference. This is, this is about two ounces lighter than this one. So, for the, the whole setup, we're talking uh, four ounces. Uh, and out of the aircraft weight of 100 pounds, I can live with that because these spar carry-throughs are probably three times stronger than this one. This one was designed on the numbers. Uh, it would carry the loads. Uh, it takes up quite a bit of space in the wing. This takes up much less space in the wing uh, and will carry way more loads than it needs to carry. And it was easier to build. Certainly more expensive, though. With these uh, pre-formed, commercially made uh, quarter-inch thick carbon fiber plates, uh, this thing here probably costs $100, $150, something like that. Uh, this one here, double that price, about $300 for this, maybe a little north of that. So, spending, uh, but worth it in my mind. So, uh, you uh, may have seen in the other video, I talked about coming back and having to, uh, that I was going to wrap carbon fiber unit direction around here to keep the load straps securely attached to the web portion because as loads get applied this way, there's going to be a lifting force on those load straps. I want to make sure that they're pinned down good and tight. Uh, I've changed my, changed my mind about that because I had to stop and think, well, there's going to be a slot in the number one rib, and this is going to come down into that slot. And then I'm going to be putting in a shear web here between the two of them, uh, between these two. There's going to be a shear web in here. There's going to be a rib here. The rib's going to come up like this. And I'm going to overlap carbon fiber on the joints here where the shear web comes in. I'm going to wrap it around the rib. The rib's got carbon fiber on it. So there's really no need to overwrap these between the rib and the other stuff I'm going to lay in here. Uh, it's going to, they're going to be well secured. They're not going to lift up. In addition, when I come in with the shear web, the, uh, the shear web will already have pre-cured carbon fiber on it, but I'm going to come in with a, a joining piece of tape here, uh, and I'm going to secure that and actually wrap down around here. I'm going to put in a little bit of filler here to create a fillet. I'm going to wrap down around and I'm going to bond that uh, skin to uh, the fitting itself. That's to give it the extra bond area it needs to make sure it stays securely attached, to make sure we have enough square inches of bond area based on the adhesive I'm using, which is good to about 2,000 PSI, make sure we carry all the loads. So the, the top flange T, this guy is bonded to that as well as the shear web here. Uh, this guy currently is bonded to the shear web. It's also held on by the load strap. But I'm also going to come in with more fabric this way to provide a flange uh, to bond onto these surfaces as well. So plenty of bonding area. Now, uh, you will notice in the video I had to mix up some uh, structural adhesive uh, with uh, cotton, powdered cotton, cotton flocks, uh, to fill in these areas here. It's the transition from the fitting to the flat shear web. And of course the fittings can't be taken to zero. Um, so there's a little gap there and I had to put in these blobs of putty and then embed the uh, load strips in it. That became a messy operation. Uh, because handling the strips, the strips have uh, epoxy on them. Uh, the fittings have epoxy on them. Things are sliding around and, and you got these two wads of filler here. And as I've thought about it over the last couple of days, I've come to what I think is the right conclusion. Uh, it, very hard to cut these slots in these fittings. I used a wet saw. The thin blade had a tendency to vibrate and bend, and these cuts aren't nice and straight. Uh, I'll use my carbide tipped uh, blade next time. That works out much better. You just have to go slow so it doesn't heat up. Um, and uh, when you finish at the end of the fittings here, you've got a slot that comes in this way. Well, this doesn't come to zero exactly, never will. Uh, there will always be a little bit of a step there. And, and to make these easy to make, this has a straight side on it like this. So I had to come in with some filler like this. I think the correct answer is uh, water jet cutting, <laughs> is to take a, a, a CAD file, a CNC file, send it out, and have the carbon fiber uh, water jet cut. And that way I could put a nice curve on this. I could take it out to essentially zero. Uh, the slots would be cut perfectly straight in a, a precision width. Uh, a little bit extra money there, but, you know, for the few hundred dollars, probably be well worth it. If I had to do this over again, I would certainly do that. I would uh, do a little uh, CAD file uh, and send that out, send the parts out and have water jet cut. It's probably the best way to do it. 
uh, quick, accurate, and uh, uh, can do fancy little slope things like that to handle the situation where you don't want these fittings to have a gap underneath them. So there was that. And then the final thing was, is you're going to see me apply some wood blocks uh, in the video to clamp the load strip on the side of this. As these come around like this, uh, they will stick up like this and they have to be clamped down like that to hold them. And because they're tapered and the shear web's in the way, it's difficult to get clamps in here. The zip ties work good out here. Uh, regular clamps work well here. Uh, but clamps don't like to sit on this tapered surface very well. And I put blocks in there and I clamped the blocks and then I taped them. Um, and <laughs> I discovered a little problem. Uh, because everything's so gooey with epoxy and I have uh, mold release tape on the wood so it doesn't stick, uh, and you apply a clamping force on those, they just wanted to slide down this way. Those, those things just kept slipping, the tape sort of holding them in place. But slowly over time, they slipped down this way and released the load on the load straps in a couple of spots. And that's what I had to go back and fix. So I think the right answer is, is you need a block on either side clamped right here so that these blocks butt up against them and they can't slide this way. And that way you can put a lot of clamping force on these blocks. They can't slide down like this and keep the uh, load on here. In, until the epoxy is cured. And I'll certainly do that with these outer fittings. I'll do a setup like that. You'll see it in the video. Uh, so lesson learned uh, for the next go around. Uh, I hope you enjoy watching the fast forward video. Come back and uh, watch other stuff that I have coming. I got a video coming up pretty soon talking about uh, tubing, wall thickness, and diameter, and the impact on the pilot's cage. I think you might find that fascinating. Uh, if you have a mind to, uh, yeah, some of these videos are uh, for everybody to watch, but I do have videos that are loaded with more technical information uh, that you might find uh, fascinating and or useful. And that's over on my Patreon channel. And you go over there and for a few bucks a month, you become a patron and you uh, get all of that technical information. Uh, in addition, if you stay uh, a patron for a year, you get your name on the glider. Uh, I'm gonna get everybody, every patron's name will be on the trailing edge of the wing. And uh, as a little tip of my hat to all of those that are helping make this possible. Uh, so. Here comes the video. Uh, you'll see me put this together. Uh, you'll see me struggle a little, but that's all part of this process of learning how to do this. We have finished parts. I can now move forward with uh, getting ready to build the center section of the wing. So thanks for watching, and here we go with the building part. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small we can sit together it's so beautiful, you and me, we meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. to be